extraordinarily low bond yields in much of the Western world have propelled droves of investors to emerging markets since the financial crisis. The result has been that the developing world had never before enjoyed such low borrowing costs. Investors are now almost literally throwing money at any bond sale by emerging market governments, particularly those denominated in dollars. So far, the superb returns have justified the faith of investors, but they will be hard to replicate next year. Some are even becoming concerned that the frothy market may result in pain further down the road. With me to discuss the big emerging market bond rally and whether it can last is Barney Bowedger, Head of Emerging Market Fixed Income and Currencies Research at UBS. Barney, thanks so much for being here today. Good to be here. Well, we have a picture here of not Darth Vader, but a statue of Genghis <laughs> Khan to show uh, one of the recent bond deals is obviously from Mongolia, which is fantastically successful. Uh, I mean, if we bring up our first chart as well, here we can see the JP Morgan EMBI Global Diversified Blended Yield. We can see here, obviously in 2000s, over 10% on average, it spiked during the financial crisis, but now at record low yield. Uh, what's this really saying? I mean, I, do people love emerging markets now? Yes, people want uh, clean balance sheets and people want yield. And that's why people have headed to emerging markets. But this is also saying one more thing, that through the course of the last 10 years, emerging market balance sheets have improved considerably. And that's because emerging markets already had their crises pretty much at the start of this graph. Mm -hmm. They had their crises, so they delevered in the fast lane. They cleaned up their balance sheets, and over the last 10 years, their credit rating has improved at a sovereign level by about three notches, and at an aggregate level, they are now investment grade. And that's why people have come into emerging markets. You have got spectacular returns mm -hmm. in EM hard currency debt relative to the volatility. The problem is, that's history. Mm -hmm. So we have to see whether we can replicate the same returns moving forward. I don't think we can. Well, I mean, there is this, I mean, there's so much money coming into it, especially on the hard currency side, denominating dollars, euros, and yen, etc. I mean, there doesn't seem to be that much supply either. I mean, is there too much money chasing too little emerging market bonds? Well, the Federal Reserve has basically siphoned off one third of the spread product when it says that I'm going to buy MBS. So, yes, the mm. supply of the spread product is very limited. Emerging market sovereigns are increasingly moving towards local currency bond issuance, and that's why the hard currency bond issuance is, is minimal. Uh, so you're absolutely right. Relative to the demand, the supply is very small, and that's why you see that in primary markets, uh, the bid-to-cover ratio in all of these auctions are very high. Mm -hmm. So the positive technical for, for EMs definitely still exists, and I think it will continue to for the next two to three years. The question is, on the demand side, the price has already moved, and that's why I think despite the technicals, your ambitions have to be more muted. Yeah, I mean, if we bring up our second chart here, we can see the spread. And this is one of the arguments that people use for saying, well, there's still more to run in this big EM debt rally, that we're still above the spreads we, we saw at the lows in 2007. But is that really realistic? Can we go below that? Um, I, I very much doubt it, because EM's dirty little secret is that global imbalances, which, by the way, peaked in 2007, benefited EM a lot. Uh, EM was a huge beneficiary from that. All savings rates improved, all investment rates improved, and basically the credit rating upgrade that I spoke about earlier came between 2002 and 2007. Mm -hmm. Since 2007, at an aggregate level, it's been a wash. For one country that's been upgraded, there's been another one that's, that's been downgraded. So emerging markets have not reformed at an aggregate level. I therefore do not believe that there's any reason for us to believe that we will see credit spreads going through 2007 levels or even approaching that. Uh, I think we could bottom out well above that. So that's why I imagine that spreads from here have probably very little further to fall. What you really have to worry about is what happens to the US Treasury component because fixed income as a whole is pretty expensive. Yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, Bannon, so much for being here today. I think you need uh, a, a Bolivian hero as well, along with a Mongolian hero, because quite a few countries are issuing. I don't think there's an immediate refinancing need, but 2015 will be different. Well, this is it, 2015. Well, let's uh, start worrying about 2013. First of all, as Bannon mentioned, there's obviously a big Treasury risk component in all these issues as well. Let's hope investors know what they're doing.